Thanks for joining us today for Think Big with Michael Zellner, powered by Platinum Jewelers. My guest today for episode 131 is part one of my interview with Michelle Danner. Michelle is a former actor, a film and stage director, and a world-renowned acting coach, and she is also an author. She has worked with many A-list actors privately and on the set, including people like Chris Rock, James Franco, Penelope Cruz, Donald Sutherland, Luke Wilson, Salma Hayek, Christian Slater, Gerard Butler, and many, many more. She is the founding director of Edgemarge Center for the Arts, and she helped raise $1.3 million, which helped in the construction of two different theaters and an art gallery at the center. And she currently serves as artistic director and teaches ongoing classes at the Michelle Danner Acting Studio in California. However, she teaches in New York and all across the world. Thanks for joining me today, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. So you were born in New York City. Uh, Your dad, Alexander, opened up the first William Morris agency, I believe, in Paris. Uh, You know, acting and art all around you. I would take it that had a a huge effect on your early life and and helped get you where you are today. Well, it did because I soaked up a lot of culture in France. I used to go as I grew up to museums, uh, would read a lot, was an avid reader, would go to the theater to see movies. Uh, I would go very often to my father's office. As a matter of fact, I was very recently in Paris and I stood there in the Rue the Rue Marbeuf, which is where the office was and looked up and, you know, a zillion years ago, I was playing under his desk, watching all these famous actors and performers come into his office talking about their dreams. And um, I had a great father and, and, a, and a wonderful childhood. Did you understand at the time as a child what was really going on, you know, what, who these people were and, and what your father was doing? Um, yes, I think I did. I think that one of the things that it cemented for me was the beauty of having your dreams come through because everybody, you know, had a vision for what their careers should be. And, and of course, growing up in, in Paris, there was a certain culture there, and I, which I was exposed to. Uh, it was just my father always used to say, you know, it's great that you're getting your education in France. That's awesome. And so you made the decision to p- pursue your education and you went to the Stella Adler School. Um, you know, first off, what was that like for you? And, you know, the, learning the acting techniques and, and getting into acting. And, um, you know, the approach, not only as an actor, but also, you know, later on with your teaching style as well, how did that help you? Um, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm very passionate about storytelling on every level. And, and I love actors and it's an interpretive art. And I actually, you said former actress, but the, the truth is, is that I'm still acting. Oh, awesome. Um, you know, when people ask me, if I like the project, I say yes. And I'm about to start a movie right now where I'll be acting in. Wonderful. So I love to act. Um, it's a great way to express yourself. And then I love to direct. People always ask me, well, which hat do you like better? And, you know, there's no hat that I like better. It all comes together. You know, after completing, you know, the training at Stella Adler, you started your career in acting and you initially appeared in a lot of different theater productions. You're able to showcase your talent, dedication to the craft. And, you know, over time, you, you gained recognition for your performances, started receiving film and television roles. Tell us a little bit about that time in your life, you know, because it had to be a pretty exciting time. And at the same time, I'm sure that was a lot of hard work, too. Well, I... I absolutely um, loved uh, studying acting. I was very, very passionate about understanding the craft of acting. And I was lucky enough to study with Stella Adler, with Uta Hagen, with some wonderful teachers, Herbert Bergdorf and um, Stephen Strimpel, uh, Bill Esper, you know, some really great teachers, iconic teachers in New York. Um, and so I soaked in, you know, techniques, different techniques. And I always rebelled when, you know, I felt there was too much dogma. And, you know, the, the teacher would say, this is the only way you have to do this. I was like, what? There's yeah. got to be other ways. I very much believed in progressive education, you know, for acting early on in my life. 
So, um, you know, and I would go to auditions and I do lots of theater. I love the theater to this day. I wrapped the movie, Miranda's Victim, and two days later I'm watching the, you know, closing matinee of American Buffalo with Larry Fishburne and uh, with Sam Rockwell, directed by Neil Pepe. And I love the theater and any chance I have to go see, uh, you know, great theater, I do that. Um, so that, there was a time where I did a lot of theater and uh, and I would audition and I did some soap operas, all my children. I did some independent movies. Uh, oh, cool. I loved that time in New York uh, when I was going up and down with the subway with my props, doing scenes for Uta Hagen, for Stella Adler. You know, it was just a, a great time. I felt like a sponge soaking it all in. That's wonderful. And we're going to go back and forth a little bit between your earlier life and your present one too. What is your perspective on the balance between technique and instinct in acting? Well, I think you have to study technique. Uh, You know, there's a misconception with actors that, you know, just, you know, be yourself, trust completely your instincts. Of course, you must do that. You must trust completely your instincts, but when you have a solid base to do that from, then you can improvise from there. So I think you have to learn the craft. You know, I always joke that so many people think they can act, right? but you don't understand that there's a craft to learn. You know, I have a friend of mine that grew up here in Memphis. Um, He's been an actor for 25 years, you know, done a lot of little stuff, been in big movies, but never, you know, had any huge parts. And I've, I've done some, you know, auditions with him and stuff like that. And, and when watching him do it and stuff like that, and I'm reading with him and they go, Oh, I could do that. No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's completely different. And watching him and like the mode he goes into, and then I'm just reading, I'm thinking to myself, no, I said, you have to be very well trained to be able to do this. Absolutely. You have to have training. It's like, you know, it's the same thing like here for you're a doctor, you know, you've got to learn or a lawyer. You have to learn the métier. It's called the métier of acting. Right. You know, when you were with Edgemar Center for the Arts, you said, quote, I always try to cast against type because my experience as a director on stage and film, it's always been a more intriguing original choice. It also adds an element of surprise for the audience, unquote. You know, part of you were talking about is when you cast Rob Estes in The Rose Tattoo. You know, if you would share with the audience why you went against what some people maybe call the norm and what changes you made in the way Rob looked, you know, super good looking guy. And at the end result, you know, his performance. Yeah, he, you know, as a matter of fact, I'm actually working with Rob now on a movie. We're going to shoot this movie called The Italians um, together. Oh, nice. he, um, he is a good looking, wonderfully good looking uh, guy, and, but also with a big heart. And uh, yeah, he did some prosthetics. He did stuff with his teeth and with the ears, and that gave him something. Um, and, you know, I respond to passion. And when people are passionate, Passion is everything. And he really wanted to do this play. We wanted to do this play together. We ran for almost a year. We had 21 people on stage and a goat. And we were sold out every night. And at the time, I think he was on Melrose Place. So we had all those limos from his old stars come and watch the play. And people came. We had a following. People came to watch it several times. We won awards. That, of course, was I have like some memorabilia of that around here. And that, of course, was uh, 20. God, it was such a long time ago. I'm not even going to say, but it was over two decades ago. And uh, and we stayed, uh, you know, in touch. And uh, we're very excited to collaborate together. Right yeah, now. I was about to say, I knew it won some awards and that's where I knew him from, from obviously from his time on Melrose Place, because I was a kid during that time. And, you know, Beverly Hills, 90210, Melrose Place were, you know, two of the big shows that, you know, the people in my generation used to watch all the time. Right. He did really well on that show. Yeah. So he had yeah, brought back some good memories. He's great. He's a really wonderful writer. That's awesome. How do you handle actors who struggle with vulnerability or emotional depth in their performances? Um, You know, 
I think that when you have a conversation, it's, it really always comes back to the work. And if you talk about what, why this story exists, what is it supposed to accomplish? Why is the character in it? What is the character about? When you start to have like conversations, you, um, you know, so many times in life, you know, when I start to talk about something, I find the answers. So it's really, to me, it's about the conversation. Very nice. You said, quote, I started acting when I was five years old. We had an apartment in Riverdale, New York, and my dad invited over the agents from the William Morris Agency. And I was told that I entertained them by doing imitations of Alfred Hitchcock, Ed Sullivan, and Judy Garland, and was tap dancing on the coffee table, unquote. You know, what, if any, memories do you have about that time? And even though your dad was who he was, how does a five-year-old know how to imitate those three legends? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was told this story many times as I grew up. Um, you know, I, I just, I love the arts. I love performing. I'm a performer. You know, some people are just little hands. And <laughs> that's... You know, you love to perform. I'm just smiling also because I have a visual of uh, this movie I rewatched last night, Little Miss Sunshine. Um, mm -hmm. Abigail Breslin, who I just recently worked with and yeah, will be working with again shortly. Um, it, you know, it was wonderful. I understand completely how this, you know, very gifted, so talented nine-year-old got an Oscar nomination for that performance. Oh, my God. That is nice. just such a performance and talk about depth and you know um but uh i anyway that's why i was smiling i just went to little miss sunshine you know having great testimonials from people who've taken acting classes from you you know it's huge in today's social media world you know this five-star review says quote the Golden Boss with Michelle Danner is a class every actor or actress should take. During the class, you find out what your emotional triggers are, why some choices are more powerful than others. The Golden Box does not only benefit actors, but writers, directors, producers as well. You learn how to create characters that are layered and more in depth. I recommend the Golden Box to every artist who wants to polish their craft after taking a class. I felt more in touch with my inner self. I could pull or imagine different scenarios in my life. Michelle challenges you to pull deep within your, as well as your imagination, end quote. You know, that testimonial mentions, you know, people polishing their craft. You know, do you have some uh, maybe A-list actors that end up coming back to you? I'm not asking for any names, you know, after, you know, maybe they're well into their careers that, you know, sometimes maybe they need to possibly, you know, polish or, or learn something new. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I love working with actors. I love coaching actors. I go through pockets of time where I do a lot of classes and I do a lot of uh, coachings. I do a lot of Zoom as well. Um, and uh, and then I'm on set, uh, as I, I'm about to be now. I'm going to be working on set for the next month. Um, so, yes, I mean, people come back. And I think that we're always studying in one manner or another, Uh you know, if you're on set, you're performing, but you're still studying. And you're, so, go ahead. I'm I, sorry. Actors understand that that they just have to come back to the drawing board and keep working out. How did you know when you're talking about you do things on Zoom? Did did COVID affect it? You know, things were you still able to teach people and uh, to switch it over to Zoom since it wasn't in person? You know, I think that when that March, when it happened in March, beginning of March, there was a consternation. Right. For a few days we were all like oh my god and then you know we caught our breath and then we started to do zooms and at first not only me but my kids in school and at first we were like oh we hate this we hate this and then we grew to love it and now it's years later we're past you know uh, the pandemic and uh, many times when you choose to get in your car and spend an hour going back and forth to a meeting you go, let's do a Zoom and right. achieve what you need to achieve. So, you know, when Zoom at first started like, a, oh, I hate this. And then it became a love hate. And now to me, it's like, I love it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm and I guess a lot of classes happened on Zoom. A lot of coachings happened on Zoom. A lot of rehearsals happened on Zoom. A lot, a lot of casting as well. Right. 
Are you shopping for a new watch, an engagement ring, any kind of jewelry at all? What's up, Memphis? This is Jaron Jackson Jr. from the Grizzlies, encouraging you all to shop where I shop, Platinum Jewelers here in Memphis. Platinum Jewelers has a big selection of earrings, stockable rings, luxury watches, necklaces, bracelets, really whenever you need. 9387 Poplar next to Fresh Market in Germantown. So if you need anything jewelry related, go to my spot, Platinum Jewelers. Yeah, and I know a lot, you know, my friend who's an actor, he does, you know, most, most, um, auditions are now done on, you know, you record it yourself and you send it to your agent or your manager and, and then they send it to the studio. So a lot of things are done just now, not even in person anymore. Exactly. But that's, you know, um, convenience. Absolutely. What is your approach to helping actors develop their unique artistic voice and, you know, and tap into their creativity and authenticity? And so what is my advice to them? Yeah. Um, you know, to just live a full, rich life. A lot of the great acting that you can learn is by living yourself and taking risks. There's a wonderful quote that Judy Dench said about, you know, you have to expand the goalposts, um, take risks. And I also love Al Pacino when he said, you know, it's a risk to not take a risk. Right. So, keep taking risks in your life and then you keep expanding the possibilities. You take chances, you go deeper inside of yourself. I also think traveling is, is a big thing. I mean, of course I'm a great believer in studying and reading and working on different material, different writers that elevates you, you know, that raises the bar. But I also think there's something, I mean, I just, I was three weeks in Europe. Uh, I just got back, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago and, um, you know, to go, we were in little uh, villages, little towns in France, in Bretagne, and then uh, we went to Italy, uh, Rome, and Venice. And I think I would highly recommend traveling to any artist because you really expand, you know, everything, and you learn so much about life and living. Um, and I, I love to travel. You said, quote, I define success as the kind of human being you are, the humanity that you have inside of you. I have two children, and although I am very happy to hear about their good grades, I'm more proud to hear that they are the kind of people and they have good hearts. And the same goes for my students. Knowing that they're not just learning to be better actors, but also better people makes me proud, unquote. I love that. And I think that, you know, although I find, found so many great things uh, that you've done when I was researching you, this was my favorite. It reminded me of my dad. Uh, he was a podiatrist for over 40 years. His patients loved him deeply because they knew he truly did care about them. And I asked him, I asked him one time why he didn't do more surgeries. And he told me I can sleep at night. Uh, cause you know, a lot of surgeons, you know, doctors make more money if they're going to do surgery and they push people into it, then maybe don't need it. And I tr truly believe that uh, even though today's country and world are a lot different than the world we grew up in, there's still a lot more good people out there than bad people, you know, by far that, uh, as you put it, have good hearts. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, you know, recently had to do uh, several interviews because my 14 year old was starting high school uh, now in, in a few weeks, in a week or so. Uh, and, um, and I remember one of the interviewers in one of the schools said, what is the most important thing to you? And I said that my child, should, what should they retain going into high school? What quality? And I said that they should have empathy. Uh, and she said, oh, my God, nobody said that. And I'm like, really? Nobody said that. Uh, but that is the most important thing to me. I want my children to be, you know, to, to, to work at being, you know, better human beings and contribute something to this world, to society, uh, and be giving. Um, so that is, those are the things that, uh, you know, are important. And of course, it's not no surprise because being an artist, I'm interested in, in humanity. And I think that that's the job of an artist is to, you know, hold up a mirror to society and remind them what it's like to be human. That word empathy is so huge. It's the exact word I tell people all the time that, it is such a lacking thing in today's society. I was just talking about it with my mom that just so many people, you hear these stories like, you know, they just, just 
people, uh, you know, the soul, such a lack of empathy, not from obviously from everybody, but, you know, some of the kids growing up today that are just social media kids that don't have that, you know, one-on-one interaction that didn't grow up as a, a kid in the seventies, eighties, or nineties, where you had to ask somebody out a date on the phone or in person, it's such a different world. So I think there is a little bit of lack of empathy from some of those people because there's not as much one-on-one interaction. Right. That is very true. How do you help actors navigate the challenges of auditions and casting processes where it's so, so important for them to make a lasting impression on the casting directors? Well, you know, I believe in being prepared. And I don't mean necessarily being prepared with the scenes of the audition, because sometimes you can either over-prepare and sometimes, depending on what the project is, you need to prepare a little less. Uh, But your instrument needs to be ready. You as a performer need to be ready, because sometimes, you know, you can soar just by picking up something at the last minute. Um, So preparation to me is everything. You've got to really work on your instrument. Um... Because, you know, that's that's what you have. That's what actors have to be able to perform. Um, so I uh, look forward to the audition. There's also a quote by Al Pacino. I'm quoting Al Pacino a lot today. Okay. But he said, you know, I, ne- I never audition. He said, I only act. And I love that because, um, you know, every audition is just a chance to be creative. Right. A chance to play. And as an actor, you're looking for opportunities to play all the time. Right. You can quote him a lot. I love Al Pacino. So, yeah, yeah. as much as possible. <laughs> so, part of the mission of the acting school says, quote, our acting school provides a creative and proactive environment that fosters you to be ready to work in the film, television and theater industry. We encourage you to take risk and work on challenging and daring material that will stretch you and push you beyond your limits, unquote. What do you believe are some of the ways that you guys do that? Um, well, I think that we have a faculty of teachers that is phenomenal. And I sit with students, you know, several times a year to see how they're doing, to catch up on their progress. And everybody is just so happy. They feel they're growing. They feel they're surrounded with really good teaching that, you know, elevates them, that pushes them to work harder. And they're surrounded by a community of actors that, um, you know, of kindred spirits that want to do the same thing. Uh, you know, obviously when you're in a class, you know, some people work hard than, harder than others. But um, we try to, you know, we have a, an interview process and we really try to, you know, bring together, uh, like I said earlier, actors that are passionate to learn the craft and to be better actors. You know, you made your film directing debut, I believe in in 2006 with the movie, how to go out on a date in Queens and starred Seinfeld's Jason Alexander, Ron Perlman, I believe, is it Asai Morales? Yes. Asai Morales, who I hear is a mission impossible and quite good. Yeah. And it was nominated and won four LA film awards and including best director what was the uh film directing debut like for you and to win those awards it had to be really special well yeah that was you know i was a babe in the woods there i didn't know anything oh uh, but it was like i was going to film school but i just you know jason alexander came and oh, enrique morciano who i just cast and miranda's victim who's an extraordinary actor and uh, i had uh, ron perlman and Isai Morales, and uh, Kimberly uh, Paisley Williams, uh, Allison Eastwood, Rob Estes had the lead, who I'm working with again now. I like to work with the same people. And nice. uh, you know, listen, it's a little rom-com. It was just a, a little movie, but we had a good time doing it. We just have fun doing it. What role does script analysis play in your teaching methodology where you're able to guide actors and bringing depth and, and, and authenticity to their performances? Well, script analysis is everything. If you don't have script analysis, then you don't understand the meaning of the moments, the meaning of what the scene is about, how it ties in into the big picture and to the themes that you're trying to convey. So you have to be able to, you know, dissect a little bit and understand what is this about? 
Can you share with us maybe a, a memorable success story or two of a student you worked with where you thought at the very beginning, oh, I'm not sure if this person's going to be able to make it. And then all of a sudden they got it and, you know, the growth and everything changed for them and it, and it showed the effectiveness of what you do. Well, I mean, the, <laughs> there's a lot of these stories because if you're, uh, you know, teach the class right, you will have students that will have epiphanies. You know, students will have breakthroughs, not in every class, but in every class, one person will have a breakthrough if you teach it well. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's so many stories of people that have, you know, found something profound in them and opened up something, opened up the floodgates and the next thing that happens. And that's the value of going to a scene study class right. because it gets you in touch with what you are able to accomplish as a performer. And then the next day you walk in on an audition for a job and you bring that energy with you. And that's not something that you can manufacture. It's not something that you can, you know, conjure if it's not there. Right. And uh, when you get in touch with your potential as an actor, and the only way to do that is to work on great material. And that's why I really inspire my students to keep reading a lot and to find the literature, find the writing that speaks to them. Some people are born to play Tennessee Williams. Some people are born to play Shakespeare. Some people are born to play David Mamet. These are all different rhythms. It's different music that you play, that you put through you. And um, so... Yes, I mean, so many people, you know, um, have to have these breakthroughs um, so that they can grow. They can keep growing. That's the whole point of it. Right. You know, I know you do a lot of interviews and, and podcasts. I have so much more that I want to talk to you about, including, you know, some of the wonderful projects you've done, including Miranda's Victim and uh, this, the sci-fi thriller that you're getting ready to do, Helios. And then you just talked about uh, another one, the Italian. Can you tell us a little bit more, just a little bit about them? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm on the eve of shooting this, but it's a really a wonderful script. Um, and uh, written by uh, Lisa Visca Phillips. And um, it's about an Italian family that it starts to prepare for dinner because their son, their only son, is bringing the girlfriend over. And to uh, the mother's horror, she finds out several things about this girl that her son is very visibly in love with. Right. One, that she's not Italian, which she could forgive, that she doesn't go to church, that she doesn't want children, that she doesn't like her cooking, uh, that she was divorced. And the list goes on. And, uh, you know, to her absolute uh, horror, she realizes that uh, these two are very much in love with each other. So it is uh, who's coming over for dinner, <laughs> uh, mixed with uh, some horror thing. Uh, but uh, it's a wonderful comedy about family. Uh, and about love and about forgiveness and about change and about Italian food. I think a lot of people are going to want to go eat some great Italian food afterwards right. and go home and hug their families. That's important. Hugs are very, very important. Once again, I'd like to thank our sponsor uh, for Think Big with Michael Zellner Platinum Jewelers, which is at 9387 Poplar Avenue in Germantown, uh, right past Johnson Road. Uh, we're definitely going to have to have you back on for part two sometime in September after you get done shooting that. And how can people find you and follow you on social media? Uh, great question. I think it's uh, M. Danner, Michelle Danner LA on Instagram, michelledanner.com. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, I'm there. You can find me. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to having you come back for part two sometime soon. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. It's thank been you. my pleasure. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs>